Andrew Jeffries, weekdays at 4.30 on KMIR, where the news comes first. The elderly man who was shot and killed by Indio police over this past weekend has now been identified. Plus, three California children who went missing after their mother was found dead are back home safe, but police are still on the hunt for the kidnappers. And in our Decision 2016 coverage, it's something we've heard from Democrats and Hillary Clinton calling Donald Trump a bigot. But now Trump switches tactics calling Clinton a bigot. The latest from the campaign trail. First in the Coachella Valley, you're watching KMIR-TV Palm Springs, where the news comes first. KMIR News starts now. Welcome to Camera News at 11 on this August 25th, 2016. I'm Dan Ball. We thank you so much for tuning in today. Before we get to all of those news headlines and a lot more, let's check in with our friend Samata Smith and how that forecast is looking outside right now. Samata? Oh, absolutely gorgeous right now temperatures. Right now. Let's take yeah, a look. You can take it. a look. 93 already. Yeah, a 24 hour change from yesterday. We're looking at it six degrees cooler than this time yesterday. Taking a, a live look outside. A little hazy out there usually in the afternoon with all these fires burning across California. When we get those shifting winds in the upper atmosphere, it kind of mixes in with all that dust. So unfortunately, our air quality at this hour about moderate. At least we're we're out of the unhealthy stage. It's just moderate conditions. 93 degrees and also moderate is our temperatures. Daytime maxes are about 105 degrees. Things are looking nice before a little gusty later on tonight. Dan. Alrighty. Thanks, Samad. Appreciate that. First on KMIR at 11 today, the man who was shot and killed by Indio police over this past weekend has now been identified as 71 year old Pedro Montanez. He was shot and killed, if you recall, Saturday night around 9 o'clock. Now, the shooting took place in an area near Jackson and Market Streets. Indio police say they received a call uh, regarding some sort of disturbance that involved a man who witnesses say had a knife and was reportedly threatening people. However, it has not yet been confirmed if the man actually was armed with a knife or any other weapon at the time that he was shot. Now, the Riverside County Sheriff's Department has taken over the investigation of this officer involved shooting from Indio PD. Uh, as soon as we get any new details on this story, we will be sure to bring them to you. A woman who went missing back in June has been identified as the woman who was found dead this weekend on a hiking trail up by Mountain Center. Authorities say the woman, 70 year old Josephine Youssef of Pinion Pines, was last seen back on June 6 near her home off Highway 74. Now, search efforts did continue over the last couple of months, but she was never located. That is until this past Sunday when a hiker discovered her body along a trail. The cause of her death has yet to be determined. Palm Springs police have arrested a woman who they say left her three-month-old son in a car while she went shopping at Walmart. Police say the little baby was left inside of the car. The car was running with the air on, but nonetheless, the kid was left there for 20 minutes by himself. This happened last night about 7 o'clock. Police say the child was not in distress when they got him out. That's the good news. 27-year-old Selena Gastello, uh, Gastello rather, of Desert Hot Springs was arrested, charged with child endangerment. Coachella police have arrested a man who they say stole a U.S. postal truck and drove off after he was in the process of trying to steal another vehicle. Hernan Ortega was allegedly threatening an elderly man with a metal pipe near Morgan Street in that city and trying to steal his car. But then a good Samaritan, a U.S. mail carrier, stopped by and stepped in to help the elderly man. That's when police say Ortega got into the mail truck and took off. Now, he ditched that truck on Avenue 52 a short time later. Cops found him, arrested him. He's now facing multiple charges. New today at 11, an ice cream truck crashes on the eastbound I-10 out near Whitewater. This happened just before 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, literally ice cream bars all over the roadway out there. Uh, part of the freeway had to be shut down. If you're watching our morning newscast, and this is what Samata was telling you about in her traffic report. Uh, this did cause some, some major backups there on the eastbound I-10. Uh, we actually spoke with someone there who was involved in the accident. They tell us they are lucky to be alive. Uh, no major injuries there. That's some good news. Also new today, a man who is claiming to represent Cal Fire has been making calls asking residents like yourself around San Bernardino and Riverside counties to assist the people with the blue cut fire. The problem is this is a fraud. That's right. It's fake. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department has received multiple reports of residents saying they've been receiving a call from a man who says that he's with Cal Fire asking for donations to help victims of the blue cut. 
However, deputies called and confirmed with Cal Fire that this man is not actually working for them. They're not out there calling, looking for citizens to donate. So if you have been contacted by this man or you've already made a donation over the phone through him, call local police and tell them what you know. Palm Springs and the Coachella Valley have always been in the Hollywood spotlight for decades. And now there is another television show that will highlight our real estate here in the desert. And the show premieres tonight, Desert Flippers, based on the real estate market here. I had the opportunity to sit down with the couple who will host this new high energy show on HGTV. Take a look. Meet husband and wife Eric and Lindsay Bennett, hosts of the brand new HGTV reality show, Desert Flippers. Our primary focus is flipping. Um, we're always out hunting for deals, designing deals. He's always out hunting, I'm designing. The dynamic co-host duo met over a decade ago in Wisconsin. We both owned our own places at the time. I was actually re remodeling my basement and of I a was condo. And remodeling he was... my basement at the same time. So we Hers ended up much nicer than mine, <laughs> uh, but they both got done. But we talked about that for hours, and that's kind of the, the first time we had ever met each other. And then within about a month of that, she decides to go in on that first flip with me. And uh, actually, the money that we made from that flip helped us to move out to California. All right, what do you think? I don't know, babe. This backyard is like a dirt pit. After nearly two years of negotiating with the producers from HGTV, the couple's hopes and dreams of having their own show have finally become a reality. How did we get our own show, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm always looking for different avenues to either have fun or to profit or whatever. So I've been on this show, Wipeout. Uh, I actually made $10 on that. <laughs> and then I threw my hat in the ring and I was on Wheel of Fortune. And then we did a weight loss thing together. And then the day we got back from that, we saw a casting call for, we're looking for people who flip houses. And that was right families. up our alley. We were skinny at the time because we just lost all that weight. So we <laughs> thought, hey, let's, let's, let's go for this. <gasps> Uh, what is this? <laughs> it's exactly what you think it is. In each episode, you'll see the entire process, which sometimes can be a bit smelly and disgusting, as this husband and wife search for a great deal, fix it up, and then flip it. You're going to see us turn you know, a, a den into a full-scale casita. Um, we take on scorpion infestation in the backyard. Um, you know, we, we clean out a pool. We take down the wall in the kitchen to have Eat an open floor rubs. plan. <laughs> uh, not as much pee and poop. <laughs> Uh, although we did find something really nasty in the pool filter, mm -hmm. uh, so you'll see that. It's an interesting transition because um, on the hunting and the negotiating of the property, it's my thing. And then we start to develop the scope of what we're going to do to the property is to maximize the return on our investment, and slowly everything transitions over to Lindsay. And then, you know, in then, the end of it, Mr. Finance here kind of brings it full circle and helps us to sell it. So, I mean, I'm really the one in charge, let's be real. I. <laughs> it's really true, at home and at work. Of course, like most reality shows, there is a cast of characters and drama. Right, that yeah, I don't normally do. Lot, and so it's usually my brother and I that are getting our hands dirty. The couple hopes the new show will not only be entertaining and beneficial to their business, but the entire valley. But we think that this will help real estate.